Remember that time in regular show they referenced that really cool thing from the 80s? You know, that, that really cool one that everyone always talks about and likes? Not sure what I'm talking about? Well, that's because I could be describing one of about a hundred references in regular show. Which is why we're back today for round three. Hey everyone, I'm Justin with Channel Frederator and today we're talking about even more references in regular show. Let's start this trip down memory lane. <laughs> If you were forced to pick just one thing to represent 70s and 80s nerd culture, that thing would probably be Dungeons & Dragons, the original role-playing game. Regular show pays an extended homage to D&D in the episode But I Have a Receipt, where, unhappy with the realm of Darthorn, which is the regular show world's equivalent of D&D, Mordecai and Rigby are sucked into a version of the game, turned real, and try to fight and get a refund for the game at the store where they bought it. The fictional realm of Darthorn is full of tributes to its real-world inspiration, like box art done in the same fantasy cartoon style as its predecessor, and a die with at least 30 different sides, which is a nod to the kind of ridiculously big 20-sided dice used to play D&D. What leads Mordecai and Rigby to stop playing the game in the first place is its impossibly complicated set of rules, which is totally like D&D, a game that requires a whole book or books of rules in order to play. Be thankful today's RPGs do all of the reading for you now, you darn kids. D&D returned to the world of regular show two seasons later in the episode Peeps, where in order to keep Mordecai and Rigby busy with work, Benson installs a living security system named Peeps, a giant eyeball and smaller eyeball stocks that surround it. He looks like a D&D enemy, the Beholder, which is an iconic monster from the game. If you didn't know what the Beholder looked like until now, then you should be thankful today's RPGs do all the reading for you now, you darn kids. Sorry, I, I feel like my dad for a second. Ever wish you had a superpower? Yeah, me too, and regular show as well, because they've acknowledged superheroes several times with sweet, sweet references. A few times throughout the show, a team of magical babies show up called the Guardians of Eternal Youth, revealed to be interstellar deities responsible for Skips' trademark youthfulness. Their similarity in appearance to one another and even their arch enemy Clog Bane the Destroyer, who is related to them, are all very similar to the Guardians of the Universe in the Green Lantern comics, who also all look the same and even have an evil ex-friend, now enemy, named Krona. Rigby gets a superhero moment in the episode Skunk when he transforms into a were-skunk after being sprayed by another were-skunk, you know, naturally. However, he doesn't transform during a full moon like a traditional were creature would. He transforms when he gets angry into a meaner, stronger version of himself, just like the Incredible Hulk does. And in the episode Death Punchies, it's Mordecai who's the superhero, when in order to save Rigby from a lava pit after a fun competition between friends gone wrong, Mordecai uses a move called the Death Jump that looks a whole lot like Superman's signature flying move, one fist triumphantly held forward as he hurtles towards the stratosphere. Okay, you know, forget about fictional comic book superheroes because now we're talking real life superheroes. Sort of, that are also fictional. I'm talking about the world of professional wrestling, where highly skilled athletes portray creative characters pitted against each other in comic book-like storylines. Regular show's creators are clearly fans because the show's very first episode, The Power, begins with WWE-style wrestling while Rigby watches a pro wrestling match on TV. He sort of mimics a move performed by wrestler B. Burrito on a doll he owns as that very same wrestler, which leads to a choreographed tag team wrestling match between him and Mordecai and the doll. The Beat Burrito doll even looks like he's wrestling superstar Hulk Hogan. Brother! Later on, the episode Really Real Wrestling is an extended homage to the WWE, with Mordecai and Rigby choreographing yet another wrestling match, this time against each other with squared circle staples like an attack with a steel chair. While Mordecai and Rigby's wrestling personas are broad parodies, it's not a huge leap to see how a wrestler like Rey Mysterio led to Rigby's mysterious Mr. R, for example. As the episode progresses, a number of other pro wrestlers with even crazier personas pop up, including a wrestler with four arms named for Armageddon. In the episode My Mom, the voice of super strong nursery employee Bobby is done by Tiny Lister, known for portraying WWE wrestler Zeus, which isn't exactly a reference to professional wrestling, but a clear indicator of the show's love for it. If you weren't aware, Mordecai and Rigby love to rap. For evidence of this, check out the episode Wrap It Up, the show's love letter to rap. It features the voice of rapper Tyler the Creator providing the voice of his cartoon counterpart, rapper MC Light also with her own cartoon counterpart, and Donald Glover aka Childish Gambino as the voice of the leader of their rap crew, who also looks a lot like Tyler the Creator's fellow Odd Feature member, Left Brain. In the episode Skips in the Saddle, Skips enters as a contestant on a dating show alongside a centaur hip-hop enthusiast named Jimmy Jams. Jams happens 
to look a lot like rapper Riff Raff or James Franco's Riff Raff inspired character in Spring Breakers, complete with the same goofy attitude as the both real and fictional version of the legend and self-proclaimed an icon. The episode D's Keys opens with Rigby accompanied by a beatboxing Mordecai, freestyle rapping about how much pizza he has. It's actually pretty cool, I'd want to be friends with anyone with that much pizza in an instant. Listen to the opening bars of Easy E's Easy Does It if you want to hear Rigby's real world inspiration, but be warned, it's a lot less polite than the fun rap about pizza. If you've ever wondered what makes a movie a cult movie, take a quick look at the fandom surrounding The Big Lebowski. People love to watch the movie, quote the movie, and even practice a religion based on the movie, it's called dudism. Like basically everyone else who's seen the movie, regular show creators are fans and the episode Skip Strikes is an example of that, paying an extended homage to the classic cult Coen Brothers film that's sort of but not really about bowling. The opening sequence starts out as practically any animated remake of the opening credit sequence of The Big Lebowski down to the style of music that plays underneath the shot from behind a set of bowling pins taken straight from the movie. It's uncanny. When Mordecai, Rigby, and friends find out that their rival bowling team is called the Magical Elements, comprised of some of the show's magical characters, it's one big volley for the spike that is a classic Big Lebowski line, you're out of your element. This line is said by John Goodman's character to Steve Buscemi in the movie, and Gary says it to Rigby in the show, before Rigby repeats it to really hit home that the show is doing something fans of the movie will love. Soon after, Skip says, that's just your opinion, death, which is almost a quote directly from El Duderino himself. Sorry if you haven't seen the movie, the main character's name is the dude, and this is almost a line that he says, I, it's funny, I promise. If you haven't seen this episode and you really like The Big Lebowski, watch it immediately. I, the references really tie the episode together. Series creator J.G. Quintel has cited some of his animated inspirations for regular show on a few different occasions. Among his influences are Rocco's Modern Life and The Simpsons, both of which would get a few nods throughout the series. In Lift With Your Back, two moving company employees are named Joe and Murray. If you put their names together, you get the name of Rocco's Modern Life creator, Joe Murray, who later created Camp Laszlo, a show that Quintel worked on as a writer. So how about that? And in season three episode Cruisin', she was the same name of a Rocco episode. The Simpsons gets a major shout out in the episode Thomas Fights Back when the founder of the park that Mordecai and Rigby and everyone else work at is revealed to be Curtis Montgomery, memorialized in a bronze statue and famed for fighting a bear. The statue and bear specifics are straight out of The Simpsons, taken from Jebediah Springfield, the founder of the city of Springfield. Okay, well maybe this one's cheating a little bit, but the episode Benson Be Gone includes a visual reference to two in the AM PM. If you aren't aware, it's an animated short by Quintel that introduced the characters of Mordecai and Rigby and was very much intended for adults and not regular show's younger audience. In the episode Temporary New Park Manager, Susan turns her head 180 degrees and crashes through a window, which is very close to a moment of two in the AM PM where a flying police car crashes through a window. Even more monster-like, the cop rides on his head like a witch's broom, yet that's something that happened in the short that inspired regular show. You didn't think we were going to get through a regular show reference video without talking about 80s movies, did ya? While we could fill a whole new video with more 80s film references through a regular show, today we're talking about Rocky. In the episode One Pull Up, Rigby has to train to do a pull up for a park fitness test. High school flashbacks anyone? I, I hated that crap. When he figures out that Eileen is pretty darn good at pull ups, he follows a training regimen that she designs. The regimen is an extended homage to the training montage of the original Rocky movie, complete with the Philadelphia weatherproof training outfit, raw egg diet, meat locker boxing, and more. Later on, Rigby uses an electroshock machine called the Russian, which is a reference to Russian boxer Ivan Drago's electroshock training in Rocky IV, the 1985 installment of the film series, because if it's referenced in regular show, it probably happened in 1985. Fun fact, the episode God of Baseball features a character voiced by Rocky film series veteran Carl Weathers. The episode was Weathers' first animated voice acting role. At this point, it might be easier to list things in pop culture regular show hasn't referenced. I'm Justin with Channel Frederator, and thank for watching more regular show references. We're three videos in and if there are still references out there, let us know in the comment section down below and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to become part of the notification squad. Make sure to check out some of our other videos and subscribe to Channel Frederator, your cartoon central on the internet, and never forget, Frederator loves you.